Good Wednesday morning. It's July 7th, 2021. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bats Last. You can find Nature Bats Last at GuyMcPherson.com. Today I'm reporting on the Arctic's last ice area. But first, some context. That context comes in many forms, all of which indicate that the Arctic ice is going away soon. And as a result, the very rapid change in global average temperature and also in the environment harbors bad news for humans and other organisms on Earth. First from July 3rd, at Live Science, Earth's cryosphere loses enough ice to cover Lake Superior every year. Lake Superior is huge. So that's a lot of ice, that's a lot of water. Here's the lead. Earth is losing ice at a rapid rate with a frozen area the size of Lake Superior melting every year. It's no surprise that the planet is melting, of course. Researchers have been documenting losses in the polar ice sheets and glaciers and in seasonal snow cover for years. They've also found that ice on rivers and lakes is melting earlier in the spring as temperatures warm, driven by climate change. But a new study out May 16th in the open access journal Earth's Future is the first to put all the frozen bits of Earth together and measure their melting in one fell swoop. The collective ice on the planet is known as the cryosphere. The finding is that the planet has lost about 33,000 square miles or 87,000 square kilometers of ice cover each year since 1979. The lead author in this paper is Zhao King Peng and he says in a statement, quote, the cryosphere is one of the most sensitive climate indicators and the first one to demonstrate a changing world. Its change in size represents a major global change rather than a regional or local issue. Another admission, as I pointed out several times, that the Arctic is the planet's air conditioner, the whole planet's air conditioner. What happens in the Arctic is tremendously important in terms of environmental change throughout the world. The researchers in this study also found evidence of a shorter frozen season each year. The first freeze of winter now occurs 3.6 days later on average than it did in 1979, and the first thaw of spring happens 5.7 days earlier. That means the melt season is 9.3 days longer every year than it was in 1979. Again, a tremendously rapid rate of change. For context, the cryosphere holds three quarters of the world's fresh water. Think about that. Three quarters of the world's fresh water is locked up in the form of ice. Now let's turn to the peer-reviewed paper described in that description that I just provided, titled A Holistic Assessment of 1979 to 2016 Global Cryospheric Extent again found in the open access journal Earth's Future and written by Peng and five other scholars. Again, this is the first holistic approach taken with respect to the entire cryosphere on Earth. So this is a big deal. Next bit of evidence comes from a peer-reviewed paper, Geophysical Research Letters, the link was sent to me by a friend of mine. The paper is authored by Nawano, Jason Box, and four other scholars. Jason Box, of course, is well known for his work in the cryosphere. The paper was published July 3rd, 2021, and the title is Rainfall on the Greenland Ice Sheet, Present-Day Climatology from a High-Resolution Non-Hydrostatic Polar Regional Climate Model. And the take-home message here is that the Greenland Ice Sheet is rapidly going away. This from the Plain Language Summary. We find that rainfall has increased over the Greenland Ice Sheet from 1980 to 2019, again taking this relatively long-term perspective. Among the eight major ice sheet drainage areas, the northwestern sector stands out as an increasing rainfall hotspot where the annual rainfall has increased fourfold. Fourfold in that relatively short period of time, 1980 to 2019. For the entire ice sheet, September total rainfall and its intensity increased by 224% and 54% 
above the 1981 to 2010 baseline over the last 40 years. An increase in late melt season rainfall is expected to contribute to an increase in late summer snow and ice melt. Our results provide the first detailed quantification of the state of ice sheet rainfall climatology, and they do so by taking a 40-year look, which is pretty impressive. More context for why the Arctic's last ice area might just be going away, and soon. This paper is, was published in SciTech Daily. It's called Scorching Heat in Siberia and Europe, Record Low Ice Coverage in Arctic Ocean's Laptev Sea. It was published July 3rd, 2021. And this links to this paper and all the others I'm going to mention here are given today at GuyMcPherson.com. The subhead for the paper in SciTech Daily, while record-breaking heat enveloped the Pacific Northwest in June 2021, other parts of the Northern Hemisphere also saw early summer temperatures climb. Into the paper, about halfway through, according to Jennifer Francis, a scientist at Woodwell Climate Research Center, the heat wave is the result of a persistent northward bulge in the polar jet stream. Quote, this is associated with a blocking pattern in the jet stream that has been prevalent over Scandinavia this year and contributed to unusually warm conditions there, especially in Finland, end quote, says Jennifer Francis, renowned scholar. All right, now we get finally to the primary point of this particular video. The headline from Live Science on July 1st, 2021, last ice area in the Arctic may not survive climate change. I promise it won't. Absolutely, we're headed for the loss of all floating Arctic Ocean ice cover and in the not too distant future. Here's the lead, even the thickest, oldest Arctic ice is disappearing as Earth heats up. And from the paper, the last ice area, an Arctic region known for its thick ice cover, may be more vulnerable to climate change than scientists suspected, a new study has found. How many times have I read these words? More susceptible, more sensitive, faster than expected by scientists. Scientists who apparently are not paying attention. The frozen zone, which lies to the north of Greenland, earned its dramatic name because even though its ice grows and shrinks seasonally, much of the sea ice here was thought to be thick enough to persist through summer's warmth. Thought to be. Until now. During the summer of 2020, the Wandel Sea in the eastern part of the last ice area lost 50% 50% of its overlying ice, bringing coverage there to lowest since record keeping began. This hints that global warming may threaten the region more than prior climate models suggest. Again, that age old phrase, faster than expected, more than previously expected, and so on. Another few bits, last ice area spans more than 1,200 miles, 2,000 kilometers, reaching from Greenland's northern coast to the western part of the Canadian Arctic archipelago. There, sea ice is typically at least five years old, measuring about 13 feet or four meters thick. That's a lot of ice. Lead author Axel Schweiger is chair of University of Washington's Polar Science Center. And he points out, quoting the National Snow and Ice Data Center, that the lowest extents of Arctic ice cover have all taken place within the last 15 years. All within the last 15 years. Climate projections suggest that summer sea ice everywhere in the Arctic, except the last sea ice area, except the last ice area, could vanish completely as soon as 2040. <laughs> really? As soon as 2040. Except in the last ice area, that's ludicrous. Uh, the peer-reviewed paper, by the way, does not cite the paper by Maslowski and colleagues published in the Annual Review of Earth and Planetary Sciences that came out in 2012 and projected an ice-free Arctic in 2016, plus or minus three years. To not mention that important paper seems like an oversight to me. In any event, as soon as 2040, 
Another one of the authors says, given our results, we expect to see large patches of open water in this area more often. As to how that might affect marine wildlife, that too is difficult to predict. It's not that difficult to predict. Without habitat, species go away, including polar bears and other mammals in the area. A little more context. I included a video in this space on April 30th, 2021, with a title that's really far too long for me to say in this space, but it's easily found there. You can also go to guymcpherson.com and find all the links to that paper. And in that paper, I quoted Jennifer McKinnon, Scripps Institution, and also the University of California, San Diego. And she expects an ice-free Arctic in 2022. She expects an ice-free Arctic in 2022. So she said in CBS News on April 23rd, 2021. This is a huge difference in terms of the people here on the planet, you and me, to expect that the last ice area will still be holding ice intact in 2040 as compared to having our first ice-free Arctic in the history of our species in 2022, those are pretty large differences. Also, James Anderson, the Harvard atmospheric scientist famous for discovering the link between chlorofluorocarbons and the ozone hole in the Antarctic, says, quote, the chance there will be permanent ice in the Arctic after 2022 is essentially zero. That was in an interview in Forbes on January 15th, 2018, after he delivered a presentation in Chicago. So there are many signs from throughout the last nearly 10 years, papers and people indicating that we're losing the ice and not in 2040 and not in 2045, but much sooner than that. I just had to include this paper from the Indian Express, published July 3rd, 2021, because the headline is something that is new to this particular media outlet, but not new to me. The headline is explained, colon, what is the Arctic's last ice area that is now showing signs of melting earlier than scientists expected? That explained, as nearly as I can tell, didn't come until after my series of videos called Explain, but whatever. Here's the lead. A part of the Arctic's ice called Last Ice Area located north of Greenland has melted before expected. Scientists had believed this area was strong enough to withstand global warming. Some scientists, maybe. But now, in a paper published in the journal Communications, Earth, and Environment, Researchers note that in August 2020, the area where the last ice area is located experienced a record low concentration of sea ice. Significantly, they point out that sea ice has been thinning for years, a trend they think has been prevalent because of climate change. So, again, there are multiple papers pointing to the rapidity of the rate of change. These last couple of popular articles point to a paper in Communications Earth in Environment, which is part of the Nature series among the most prestigious of peer-reviewed journals. This one published July 1st, 2021, entitled Accelerated Sea Ice Loss in the Wandel Sea points to a change in the Arctic's last ice area. It's published by Axel Schweiger and four other scholars and indicates in the abstract there was a multi-year sea ice thinning trend due to climate change. So finally an open admission in peer-reviewed literature that this is a result of climate change. Within the paper itself, some fairly important passages that I would like to bring your, to your attention. Recent work indicates that while western and eastern sectors of the last ice area have distinct physics, they both are experiencing long-term sea ice thinning and thus are both vulnerable to the processes discussed in this study. Our work suggests a re-examination of climate model simulations in this area since most do not predict summer 2020 level low sea ice concentration. Uh, 
until several decades or more into the future. Yes, that's been the standard path throughout all of history is that whatever is coming at us will not have any impact until far into the future. And 2100 is everybody's favorite trick, of course. Another little snippet from this paper, the assumption that the last ice area will be available as a refuge over the next century, a refuge specifically for large mammals, is inherently linked to projections about species population status because for some species, the last ice area will be the last remaining summer sea ice habitat. It is critical that future work quantify the resilience of this area for conservation and management of ice dependent mammals under climate change. And I would argue that one of those ice-dependent mammals under climate change that will be greatly affected is one that you probably know about, Homo sapiens. Stunningly, no mention in this paper of the very important paper by Maslowski and colleagues in the 2012 Annual Review of Earth and Planetary Sciences. Overlooking the paper by Maslowski and colleagues seems like a serious omission to me, but what do I know? Anyway, thanks for staying tuned to this relatively long video. We look forward to putting out another one of these science updates in about a week.